Some are calling it the greatest win in UCF football history. Some are calling it the greatest homecoming win ever. But everyone agrees that Saturday's 37-32 win over 12th ranked Houston was nothing if not memorable. And hello again, UCF fans. Welcome to this edition of UCF Sports Today with George O'Leary. That guy's the coach. I'm Pat Clark, and we're delighted that you are here. Uh, congratulations, George. I know what you would call this. You would call it a big Conference USA victory, wouldn't you? It really is. I, I think it's a great win for the for us in conference, and I think it's a great win for UCF. I, I tell you what, the student body really came out and, and did their job. The noise factor by them was outstanding, and you know that that made a difference in the game. Uh, let's put this in historical perspective because there is some here. Uh, in 30 years of football at UCF, this program had never defeated a ranked team. That's 0 for 22. Uh, there are a lot of UCF boosters and fans. I know, George, you've only been here for a fraction of that time. It's been a long time coming for some of those folks. And I'm wondering if in the aftermath of the victory, you heard from any of those folks or if you could feel that emotion <laughs> inside Bright House Stadium because it was electric in there. I, I heard from the people I need to hear from. That's, <laughs> that's how, I don't need to hear from a lot of those people. They're, fr they're fair weather friends. Well, you, you talked about uh, after the Marshall victory, which was exciting as well, that the locker room was, well, there was a lot of happiness and the, the guys were going nuts. What was it like for the players after this? You come in uh, against an underdog, or you were an underdog against a, a heavily favored team. What was it like in the locker room? I, I tell you, uh, right from the start of the game, I, I thought we were ready to play. I thought it was, we had a great game plan and go out and execute the game plan. We're in great shape. Uh, went out, we made some miscues early in the game, and I thought we, we came back in the second quarter, as we spoke earlier about, and uh, I think halftime was the big difference in the game. I, I thought that they understood that just do what you're supposed to do and things will work out well, and there was no panic in anything, and I thought they took the third quarter. I thought that was the difference in the game. Well, the, the game plan did indeed work out almost to a T. It was so much fun to watch this game, and if by chance you missed it, we're going to take, take some uh, highlights, have a look at some highlights, and look ahead to another important Conference USA game against Tulane coming up this coming Saturday, and we're going to look back at a big homecoming weekend as well. It's all straight ahead on UCF Sports Today with George O'Leary. So stay right there. UCF Sports Today with head coach George O'Leary is brought to you by Holler Classic, the official automotive group of the UCF Knights. Buy smart, be happy. Today's show is also presented in part by Bright House Networks. See how bright life can be. And Coca-Cola. Welcome to the Coke side of life. SP Sports is the exclusive worldwide marketer of UCF Athletics. Hey, welcome back everybody to UCF Sports Today with George O'Leary in the aftermath of the Knights 37-32 win over Houston on Saturday afternoon. We, we just touched on the whole game plan thing and we even talked about it here last week. Uh, sometimes the best defense is a great offense and if you can keep a guy like Case Keenum uh, who is a prolific passer, the most prolific passer in the nation right now. If you can keep him and his cohorts off the field, then you're doing your job, and that's exactly what you did. The time of possession was skewed heavily towards UCF, almost double the time that Houston had the ball. Great job, George. It really was when you when they're in, when again they run in spurts, and when they're hot, they're hot. You know they're, they're, that fourth quarter was exciting as far as you know they made plays and. Again, I think, as I said earlier, I think it was a game of conditioning for the defense and execution for the offense and, you know, and moving the chains and, and using that clock up. And, and I think that played to our advantage. I thought we ran the ball well at times. And, and again, obviously, uh, Brett Hodges had a great game. Uh, the whole season has been a baptism of fire for your secondary because they're mostly young <laughs> kids. And Mike Greco, while he might be a senior, this is his first year playing in the secondary. So effectively, in some ways, kind of like a freshman at the position. But the numbers were great. Ishmael with the eight tackles. Justin Body had six tackles. And the interception returned very nearly for a touchdown. Greco had five tackles. Josh Robinson, again, played a great game. And you're seeing maturity from these kids with each passing week, especially 
on Saturday, right? It really did. I think they, uh, that was a, a ver great receivers, great speed and stuff. And I think we were in location where we were supposed to be. I think, you know, they're going to make some throws, but there wasn't a lot of yak after the catch or the last errant throws because of, of pressure on the quarterback. And, you know, I, I think we did that without dogging a lot, which I think was key. And I think the big thing was that it was a complete team game, offense, defense, and except for that kick return, special teams. Yeah, you called uh, Brett Hodges in the aftermath of the victory a warrior, a 21 of 25 for 241 yards and a touchdown. You can knock the kid down, he gets back up. You knock him down, he just keeps getting back up. Tell me a little bit about his performance. Well, I, I, I'm, I think he was 21 of 25, and he had a couple drop there, but... Uh, again, he hasn't made the same mistake twice. He, they put a new dog in there that they got, they got to him, and uh, we, he corrected it real quick as far as getting rid of the ball quicker. And, and I think it was just a good game. He keeps, a, he keeps his head all the time, which a uh, great poise. And, and again, that rubs off on a bunch of his teammates as far as never getting into that panic mode. All right, well, let's uh, head off to highlights on what was a beautiful Saturday afternoon, a rare noon kick for UCF. and. Uh, uh, take a look at this Lawrence Young fumble recovery after a great Mike Greco tackle, which led to your first score of the game, which was a field goal, George. Right, and uh, again, we said we had to get some turnovers, and that was that came at a good time. Uh, Brent Harvey had another mammoth day, he carried the ball 35 times for 139 yards. Uh, this is a little pitch and catch and gets it uh, down inside the 25-yard line. That was a 23-yard gain. They kept a scoring drive aligned. And here's Jonathan Davis, your freshman, who gets better and better with each touch. Take a look at this. And he would have gotten more yards had he not tripped over his own feet. Uh, but that would get a first and goal. And then ultimately, and uh, almost fittingly, he would wind up getting the score. Uh, an easy touchdown here into the end zone. And it's a 17-10 game uh, just before halftime. So a team that trailed 17-3 at one point is now right back in it. Really were, and that, that was big heading into the halftime as far as getting momentum going and enthusiasm. And here's Case Keenum, and this is just before half. In fact, this would end the half. There's the, the sack, and Johnny on the spot, Bruce Miller with another one. So it's a 17-10 game at halftime. Uh, what's confusing about this is if you're just looking at the score, you're seeing that Houston is leading 17-10. to But for all intents and purposes, you guys were controlling the game. In that second period alone, Houston only had the ball for a minute and a half, so this is the game plan working perfectly. It really was. We give up the, uh, the one on a blown assignment, then open receiver behind us on a blown assignment. And the other was the kick return that, you know, we've been, we're number one, we were number one in the country kickoff coverage. So, <laughs> you know, we gave up 14 points right there. But I tell you what, they had that, you know, when you get in at halftime and you look at them, they had that, 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 glare about them. They knew that, you know, we could play better in certain situations, and I thought they went out the third quarter, which I think was the key of the game, uh, went out and, and really had some three and outs, three and outs, but more important, we scored during the three and outs, and I think that was big. And, and football games are all about adjustments, too, aren't they, George? Sure. And while they did have that 51-yard scoring play early, it seemed that as the game wore on, you were getting used to what Houston was throwing at you, and you were able to to adjust, which is a great uh, testament to the way your players were playing. And you had talked earlier about um, yards after the catch, too. You were able to hold their receivers to minimal yards when they did get the catches. They did. I, I thought we started playing to the speed of the game. I, I think initially it was a little quicker than we probably can practice, which is normal. And uh, I thought we adjusted to the speed of the game. We adjusted to some of the routes. And I think what they paid for every catch they made, which I think was the key of the game. Okay. Off to the second half we go. Again, the score at halftime was 17-10. A quick stop. Uh, Houston got the ball on its first possession, and the Knights stopped them dead cold. Now here's UCF driving. Amar Aiken with a 17-yard catch. He's made a number of great catches this season. And, uh, uh, that was another one, and uh, Quincy McDuffie starting to come alive, getting more reps and more minutes. Uh, this is a 15-yard catch to the outside, uh, which ultimately would lead to a one-yard touchdown run by Bryn Harvey, who had three scores on the day. And the point was no good here, George, but it's 17-16, Houston leading. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was a low kick. <laughs> 
It, it uh, was a low kick. There was another one that was low, too, that went through the upright there in the first half. And here's another big sack by Bruce Miller. This was on a third and long play. It stopped Houston's next possession. And McDuffie, once again, we've mentioned his name a lot, and we're going to continue to mention, had another great catch. Uh, you, we'll show you just a little bit later. Talk about yards after the catch. He got some right there. He sure George. did. I think he's going to be an outstanding player. Great, great, great speed. And here's Bryn right up the gut, 41 yards, and UCF has its first lead at 23-17. You alluded, Coach, to the fans, the, the students who came out. You saw them there in the end zone. And then take a look at the Justin Body interception. This is after UCF had scored yet again, takes it to 22 yards, which set up a Bryn Harvey touchdown, and ultimately UCF holds on for the 37-32 to win. <laughs> That was an exciting second. It half really was. I tell you what, it was a, a national TV game. Uh, a lot of text messages back and forth after the game. But, you know, I think it was a great win for the university. I, I was very happy for Dr. Hitt and, and the university. And it, it's something that you can get that, you know, off your back a little bit about, you know, ranked teams. And uh, we, have, we have two conference games left that are really important as far as what's taking place. And... All we can do is do what we need to get done, and let's see what happens at the end. Coach, you have to have a lot of talent to defeat ranked teams, but you also have to have it in your head that you can defeat these ranked teams, and motivation is a big part of every football game. What happened on Friday night when you talked to the football team, and what is it about Muhammad Ali that made this <laughs> a know, special uh, weekend? Uh, Coach Huxtable, who does a great, great job with the defense, had a, had a tape on Muhammad Ali, and... Uh, just all the fights he was in and the punches he threw and kept coming back and and we treat this game like a 15 round championship fight and that get up get up keep coming back keep coming back and it was about two and a half minute tape and uh, it, I, you know just how quick he was and and, and the punishment that takes place in a, in a heavyweight fight like that and and that's what we treat like a 15 round fight and the kids you know, they, 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 some of them, they knew who he was and all that. And, and it was just a great deal for the kids. And we didn't have to say much after it. We just say, you know what the game's about. You know, let's make this a 15-round fight. And, again, they treated it like that, I thought, for most of the game. Uh, I heard that uh, the players were so jacked up after that whole session that they wish they could have played the game on Friday night rather than Saturday at oh, noon. That uh, they, really worked, didn't you know, it? There's times you have to say things on a Friday night. There's times when you don't have to say much at all. After that tape, it was a great tape just to show perseverance and continuing, you know, just competition and, and what it takes to win a championship game. And we treated this game like a championship game, and, and we should have. I, I think they're a very good football team that does a lot of good things. and. Uh, I, I thought we answered the bell, if that's probably the right way to put it. Well, perfect. That sounds great. And uh, we're going to take a look back at a, a most memorable homecoming weekend with the exclamation point being the 37-32 win over Houston. That's straight ahead on UCF Sports Today with George O'Leary. The Knights Kids Club, presented by Chick-fil-A, is an exciting new club just for kids 8th grade and under. Call 407-823-6165 or log on to UCFAthletics.com to join now. He looks, he throws towards the end zone. It's high, it is caught, McDuffie! Did he hold on? Touchdown, or yes, touchdown, McDuffie! How about that? Wow, he holds on and makes an incredible catch from 23 yards out. Quincy McDuffie for the score. 
big day for Quincy. Four catches for 77 yards and that touchdown right there getting more minutes because Rocky Ross wasn't doing well. First things first, how's Rocky? Rocky didn't play. He's fine. You know, he's basically that ankle continues to give him problems and hopefully he'll be ready for this week. Last week he just, you know, couldn't go on, on track as far as that leg ankle was concerned and we'll continue to work with it. But obviously he's he's missed when he's not out there. And but you know, Quincy went out and he continues to get better, much like we talk about the defensive backs. Mm. He's doing it as an offensive freshman receiver. Well, he brings some tools too because he, you know, he has the he had the kickoff return for a touchdown earlier this season, and because Rocky didn't get to play, he gets more reps. A beautiful touchdown catch there in the end zone. That was impressive. It I mean, really it was looked like a freshman catching a ball right oh, there. I tell you what, he just needs time, 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 and he'll get better and better. Well, it was a great uh, homecoming weekend, Coach. I know that you enjoyed it, especially on Saturday. You would probably just as soon do without some of the things leading up to the game because you're always concentrating on the job at hand. But it was in so many ways a wonderful homecoming weekend and if you don't believe me take a look hey fans just be out there and support the Knights and let's be Houston Let's go, Knights! Ball is up. Tap is controlled by UCF. Here comes Isaac. Get out and in. He shot block from behind. Dykite's got a head fake. Goes up. Shot no good. No! Baby. Hold on. That will do it. A very impressive opening night win for the UCF Knights in front of 8,727. If you look over to the left, it's the UCF Spirit Squad, led by the UCF cheerleader. First down, hand off to Harvey. He'll run right. He'll get inside the five. He spins to the two to the one. He dives to the end. Touchdown, Brent Harvey. 8.30 to play, and the lead is 16. The other thing you did with today's win, man, you became what? Boy! win in a 37-32 victory over Houston in uh, homecoming at UCF. We haven't even talked about the black jerseys. Why the black jerseys on Saturday? Uh, you know, I had promised Adidas that I would do that, and I hold true to my word and stuff, and that was something early in the season they asked me to do to help, the, I guess, retail with their you know, selling of black shirts and black T-shirts and stuff, so I agreed to that. So now with that big victory in the black jerseys, might they come back against Tulane? Well, now we got three jerseys we can wear, I guess. You know, so we're in good shape. So have we, you decided what you're going to wear against Tulane? Not no, really I matters. haven't, Pat. You know better than that and stuff. It's a home game for us, and we'll probably come out with what we normally come in, out with. In your postgame comments, you talked about how victories like this can really change the course of a program. Not that this program needed a course change, but when it gets in the heads of players that they can they can beat the Giants, assuming that Houston was a Giant. And by the way, Houston now isn't even leading their division in Conference USA, which gives you an idea of how competitive that it is. But can that get in the heads of the players, and, and what can that do for a team psyche? Well, I think the players always know that. I think it does more for your fan base. I mean, they're the ones that need to pick it up as far as, you know, looking at how they attack games and how they show up to games and all that. I think the big thing is the team always has that competitive look, and now hopefully everybody gets on the same page. And the message there is... We need to fill the stadium for the game against Tulane, and we'll talk about that game when we come back on UCF Sports Today with George O'Leary. Be sure to visit Buffalo Wild Wings in Waterford Lakes every Thursday night from 7 to 8 p.m. during the season to hear the George O'Leary Radio Call-In Show.
Fans, here are your run for Ronald totals for the game. UCF had 393 yards of offense and five touchdowns for a total donation to the Ronald McDonald House of $893. McDonald's, I'm loving it. Hey, welcome back everybody to UCF Sports Today with George O'Leary. The Knights now six and four overall with just a couple of losses in Conference USA. Still very much in the title hunt. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Tulane coming to Bright House Network Stadium for a two o'clock kick this coming Saturday afternoon and it's going to be senior day. Uh, it's kind of a bittersweet thing because you've enjoyed having all these kids play for you these number of years, but this is their uh, potentially their final home game. It really is. There are 13 of them, but I tell you what, they, they've been some great moments with them for our fan base, the student body, and uh, you know they should be honored the right way. Uh, I think they've uh, well known who they are, and uh, I think that they deserve a great send off. We talked about how Conference USA has become so competitive. Houston with the loss, now actually trailing SMU over there in the West Division, but they've got their business to do, and you have your business to do. Still with an outside chance, again, you're going to need for some things to happen to win the East Division of Conference USA, but the focus now is on Tulane, a Tulane team that lost to Rice on Saturday. What do you know about Tulane and what will you be expecting from the Green Wave? Well, you know, what I know about them, I've seen them on crossover tape, is that, you know, they, uh, they're a typical Conference USA team. They, they're a little bit more like us, run, trying to run the ball and stuff of that sort. And uh, again, uh, I think every game you treat as an A game, and that's the way you have to go after this one. Uh, it's a home game, and, you know, I know one thing. The last time we played Tulane, we didn't win the game, so mm -hmm. I'm very aware of that. Well, I know that you, you've always said that you can only control what your team does, and you're getting that job done right now, but you are going to need some help on Sunday night. East Carolina is playing Tulsa, so you'll be a big fan of Tulsa <laughs> on Sunday. Now, you effectively need, George, for East Carolina to lose a couple of times. You're going to need for Southern Miss to lose at least once as well, but you've said before, now we're getting to the point of the season where a lot of these division leaders are going to start playing each other, so we anything can happen. It really can, and that's why I just worry about one at a time, and the big one that we had to take care of, and, and the kids did it and uh, did it well, was Houston. I think that was the big one. Now the next big one is Tulane, and right after that would be the next one would be UAB. So every one of them are big games, and as we said, it was a six-game series, and we're down to two now, and we just got to continue on the same path we've been going. Well, congratulations on a big win, Coach, and best of luck against Tulane. Thank you. We hope that you folks will join us for another edition of UCF Sports Today next Sunday. So until then, for the coach and everyone at UCF and ISB, I'm Pat Clark. So long, everybody. UCF Sports Today with head coach George O'Leary is brought to you by Holler Classic, the official automotive group of the UCF Knights. Buy smart, be happy. Today's show was also presented in part by Budweiser, the perfect balance of flavor and refreshment. Open up a world of taste. By the energy-saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. Syntex Homes. For a better way to a better home, visit Syntex.com. Thank <laughs> you.